The Galaxy Z Flip 5 has been one of the most unique devices of the year. It does a lot of things with its software. Samsung have just upped it to One UI 6. What does it change? What improvements does it make to this very unique form factor that you should know about? This video, we're going to cover everything that One UI 6 has changed with the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech With Benefits. You're here with Daniel. The Z Flip 5 just got the One UI 6 update not too long ago. Apart from some visual changes to the user interface, you know, you've got some new fonts and some different looking shaped icons, I guess very subtle, but you definitely can notice it. There's some other changes within here that are a little bit different to what you get from your slab smartphones. So yes, with your Ultra and even what Samsung enabled on your Z Fold 5. So I thought I'd make a video dedicated to what the differences are with the Flip 5. We're going to break it down into categories as usual. We're going to look at the user interface, we're going to look at the camera and the gallery, look at Samsung apps, and we're also going to take a look at settings that Samsung has enabled for the Z Flip 5. First thing you notice when it comes to the user interface is the quick panel. Set it in the other two One UI 6 videos with about the other phones, is that straight away, not on the first swipe down, but definitely on the second, Samsung has changed the expanded quick panel to look different, and it's very different. It's a lot different. The thing I like though is Samsung have thought about it. It's not just been a, let's make it bigger and see what happens. There is some purpose here. For example, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth toggles are separated from the rest, and that makes a lot of sense. You use these toggles probably more frequently than you do anything else. Also down the bottom too, anything that's sort of tied into the display is now tied in with the brightness slider. And then of course you have smart view down the bottom, which again is something that a lot of people might try and use a bit more frequently and hunting for it in that middle section can be a bit frustrating. But I like the middle section. I like that that's front and center too, because that is where you'll probably want to swipe and interact in that sense. And anything that's a little bit more purposeful, you will go hunting for it in those corners at the top and bottom. Samsung has enabled a new way to bring this slider down as well in the settings that you can customize here. There's a little button that's enable quick settings access and you turn this on and from the top right of the screen, you can bring this down with one swipe. You can of course still bring it down with two finger swipe, but there's a quicker way to do it now. One finger from the corner brings it down. In here as well, Samsung has improved the music player. So the little music player that would appear as a little notification card has got a much needed visual refresh. In its collapsed view, it's still the same as probably what it was before, but in its expanded view, you get the album art, you get some funky little animations when the song is playing. It's definitely a freshen up and I appreciate it. I checked to see if Samsung brought a different change to the cover screen with the Flip 5, but it's as it was, a little thing comes down in the bottom corner in that little folder, I guess you could call it to alert you there's music, click on it and it still does the same thing as what it did before. There is no change to the panel layout from the cover screen as well. You bring that down, it looks the same as it did before. Samsung hasn't made any wild changes here. With the lock screen, so with the flip, it's not something you'll probably use a lot. You can change the position of your clock. But like I said, it's not something that's gonna be used a lot because most of the time the flip will be closed and then when you open it, you're going to be having it unlocked straight away. No one's really gonna keep it open. At least they shouldn't. Samsung has enabled some different widgets or changed up some of the widgets. The weather widget has got, well, it's more the weather app. You go into the weather app and Samsung has enabled some more contextual information within here. It's nothing drastic. It's just a little bit of a reorganization and bringing more things front and center that are probably a little bit more important. The animations for widgets is fixed. And like I said all along, Samsung were always going to fix it. Those doomsayers out there that were saying it was going to be the end of the world for Samsung because of it weather widget come on samsung has also brought in a new smart suggestions widget so it used to just look like a card that had a border in a background now it just looks like apps on your screen i understand the change because some people might have been confused by what it was before so having it just look like apps makes more sense but that's a visual change it's not a function change it still behaves the same way there's some new multitasking feature it's not well it's new i guess in a sense if you have a pop-up window open so like if you drag an app into a pop-up environment and you minimize it, that'll stay open in the Recents tab. So you go into the Recents menu, that's sitting there. You press on it, it comes back into its pop-up form. It's neat, it's there, Samsung has enabled it. In the Finder, so when you go searching for apps, you can now long press on an app and go straight to a function within that app. The actions are still there underneath there, but from the app itself, you can long press on it and it'll bring up that menu for shortcuts. There's new emojis, yep. 
Let's move on. There's new emojis. Samsung has enabled some brighter, fresher emojis on the Z Flip 5 through One UI 6. The thing I noticed mainly about them is that they're just a fresher design. There's a bit more color about them and not, not a lot of shadow. It's definitely more colorful and playful. I always say emojis, it doesn't really matter because whatever you're sending to someone, they're receiving whatever their phone is capable of viewing. So ultimately it doesn't matter. For you, that's what you get to see. Now let's get on to the camera. Now with the camera for the S23 series and for the Fold series, there was some pretty big changes. The Flip 5 doesn't get as many of those and a lot of it's down to the lack of hardware that it has. From a visual standpoint, it gets the update, the new look and feel, the new font makes its way across. What doesn't make its way across is the toggle for high resolution because there is no high resolution sensor. It's only got a 12 megapixel main camera, so you can't toggle to 50 or 200 because it just doesn't exist. There's no real function difference there, which is fine. The video resolution toggles are a little bit cleaner though, so that does make its way across, but yeah, the high resolution, not there. The new auto scanning for receipts is here on the Flip 5. So again, you go into settings, into the scan documents and text, and there's a toggle there to auto scan receipts. Toggle this on, and anytime you point your phone at a receipt, to automatically detect it, scan it, and take you to the editing environment. Which if you've ever, ever had to scan receipts for expenses purposes before, this is going to be a blessing. The whole process will be sped up a lot quicker. It's the most painful task at the end of the night. I know, claiming money back that's rightfully yours, painful. Now in the settings, Samsung has brought some things here that I wasn't expecting them to. So things from Camera Assistant, which is the maximum, medium, and minimum quality, I didn't expect the Flip to need that. A lot of the problems with Samsung's sensors being not fast enough comes from them having too high a resolution. I didn't think there would be a problem here. Either way, Samsung has brought it into the main native camera settings. Just keep in mind that toggling it to medium or minimum automatically shuts off Scene Optimizer. So you cannot turn it back on. It, it, it removes all post-processing pretty much effectively. So just know that you cannot use Scene Optimizer in that form. One thing that's not here that's in the other ones is the new Auto FPS toggles. The auto FPS is there, but there is no toggle to go from 30 or 60 or just 30. It is just on or off. Just thought you should know. The turn off swipe for going from the rear camera to the selfie camera, that's on the One UI 6 here. It's a good one. A lot of the time you can accidentally activate the selfie camera by swiping to the camera mode and then you've accidentally swiped up. So Samsung being the, the good generous software developers they are, have toggled this on or enabled you to toggle it on or off for yourself in the settings and it works as intended. Probably my second favorite feature though when it comes to the camera is the camera leveler. This does make its way to the Flip 5 through One UI 6. Anytime you've got grid lines on, just, so just go into the settings and turn on grid lines, and any camera mode that's on your phone, except for panorama, you can have the leveler feature be on. So it helps you balance the horizon line and keep your photo nice and level. It works in video mode, it works in night mode, works in portrait mode, it works in any mode except panorama. And it's great to have because it just helps that little bit in balancing out the photo and keeping it level. Something I'm very excited that the Flip has got is a dedicated two times button within photo mode. It's activated through the camera assistant, again, but it's done a little bit differently to the way it's done on the Fold and the S23. Again, because there is no high resolution, Samsung has had to use an AI algorithm to process the photo differently and upscale it to make sure it meets the resolution standards of 12 megapixel for that two time shot. I wanted to see what it actually does, and the difference it makes. So I used my Note 20 Ultra, the one I used from my comparison last week with the Fold 5, and I took a two time shot with that and a two time shot with the Flip 5. I was astounded at the difference. So whatever Samsung has done, whatever secret sauce they've sprinkled here with the algorithm, the two times on the Flip 5 looks sensational compared to the two times on the Note 20 Ultra. Despite that having a 108 megapixel main camera, its resolution cannot hold a candle to the detail that the Flip 5 is getting. You can see as close as you can get, the Flip 5 just has more detail, more color. It's a better photo and it's not using high resolution to do it. So whatever Samsung's done, it's a great job. The thing to note here though, is that two times button doesn't make its way to night mode or to videos. The Fold and the S23 gets both of them in there. So it's just something Samsung is obviously aware of that they probably pushed it as far as they could with the photos and didn't want to give that experience to the other modes, which I think is fine. You just miss out on it in those two areas. I also want to test the cover screen selfies. There is no two times toggle, but the two times photos from the cover screen 
do look really good. This is an example of one here. So I think Samsung has brought the algorithm to it. It just hasn't got the button. So your two times selfies are also going to look great. Oh, I also checked two times portrait and no, no, not there. Samsung's gallery, like I've said many times in the past, is exceptional. What Samsung has done here is they've made it a little bit easier to access things. So for example, the information of a photo, you no longer need to swipe up. I mean, you still can, but there is a big information button dead center when you have a photo open. Bringing this up will bring up a couple of different things. One, of course, the information of the photo, but two, Samsung has added some toggles here for some edits you can do directly from here. Things like remaster and object eraser, but also what I learned as well is adding in portrait effects to a photo of a face. So if you've got a photo of yourself or of someone that's got a face in it, it'll recognize that and recommend adding a portrait effect through this toggle. You press on it and you adjust the slider and away you go. What I really like about it is it used to be housed in the three dot menu and it wasn't really obvious. Samsung, I'm just bringing it into your face and letting you know it's there, which is the reverse of what they've done with actual portrait photos. Before there used to be a toggle to change background effects down the bottom. Now Samsung has made sure that's in the information section. So when you press the information toggle on a portrait photo, that change background effect button has been moved to there. I don't know how I feel about that. I liked it being down the bottom, but I get the idea of wanting a clean aesthetic on just looking at the photo. The drag and drop with two fingers makes its way to the gallery. So you can drag and drop on a photo, use your other finger to navigate to another album and then drop it in with your finger that was holding onto the photo. Really neat, copy or move it, it's up to you makes things a little bit easier when you're organizing stuff. The thing I was really interested in was the new Gallery Labs features. What's Gallery Labs, I hear you ask? It's a really good question. In the hamburger menu of the gallery itself, there is settings. In settings, if you go all the way down to the bottom to about gallery and tap on the version number seven or eight times, it'll activate Gallery Labs. In Gallery Labs is where Samsung keeps experimental features or features they've removed that you might want to bring back with every One UI version update. For example, with One UI 6, Samsung removed the three dot menu from the bottom corner. Gallery Labs, you can bring that back with a toggle. That's great. The thing I was most interested in that caught my eye was Remote Gallery. I pressed on it, told me what I needed to do. So I go into the album, I start Remote Gallery, and then it gives me a QR code. So I have to be on the same network, I scan it, nothing happens. So I'm not sure where Samsung are going with this. I understand the, the concept. It's to allow people in your household to share and interact with, a, with an album if you've been on holiday, but it, I couldn't get it to work. I'm gonna keep trying, but as of now, no good. Now we move on to Samsung apps. Samsung, as I've mentioned lots of times, make a lot of apps. And they've updated a lot of them here with One UI 6. Not drastically, there's just some little key functions that improve things for usage within that app. First one, Samsung Health. Apart from a visual design overhaul, which happened before One UI 6 was launched, there's a new little feature in here that just hits right. You can change the custom cup size when you're adding water. It used to just be 250 mil at a time, but now you can go in and make it whatever you want, which is just great but also so obvious. Why didn't this happen before? Within calendar, Samsung has enabled a new schedule view. It's very simple. You simply have to enable it and it's a chronological view of everything that's happening with no gaps. So normal calendar, you see blank days, not here. Every event that's on listed chronologically. The two finger interaction thing, you can move a calendar event uh, when you're in a weekly view. So if you hold down on an event, and use your other finger to swipe through, you can then drop it into place where you need it. Samsung has also allowed you to view reminders and interact with reminders from the calendar app. And one day, one day, they might make it one app together. We'll see. While we're talking about reminders, the reminder app got a couple of updates as well. Samsung refined the list view. So the view of everything in a list is apparently a little bit cleaner, a little bit more organized. And there's some new categories intertwined in here as well that Samsung has allowed for from within the app. A big one is Samsung Internet. Samsung Internet is sensational as an app, and you're about to probably think it's a lot better. So if you watch a lot of video content through your favorite video app, every time you exit out of the app, the audio stops. With Samsung Internet, you can enable background play through its useful features function. When you turn this on and you're watching a video, yep, when you exit out of the app, internet or change tabs, that will still be playing in the background, audio and all. So you get the experience of the video playing without it actually needing to be on your screen, which if you're listening to music is probably one of the best things you could hope for 
So give it a go, try this, and let me know if you've been using it in the comments below. Samsung's My Files app has integrated the gallery trash bin and the voice recorder trash bin into its trash recycle bin, whatever you want to call it, which I think is great. Consolidating things like that makes life a whole lot easier. It means I don't have to go navigating and patrolling everything. I can do it all from one. So well done. You can now track text from a pinned smart select that's been on your home screen. So when you crop out a certain part of a photo and you pin it to your home screen, there's a text button that appears, allows you to copy and paste that text anywhere you sort of need to. That's new, it's a new function. Now on to settings. Samsung enables a lot of settings within One UI and they always update some every time they bring out a new version. The biggest one I think this year is the new airplane mode. If you go traveling a lot, this will definitely interest you. Every time you turn flight mode on, it toggles off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is just infuriating. So now if you then turn back on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth while flight mode is enabled, the next time you turn on flight mode, your phone has remembered that and will keep those two on, meaning you don't have to go and turn on a million different things after you've activated flight mode. Very, very handy, especially if you're a smartwatch wearer, it always disconnects it. So this won't have to happen. Or if you just connect to in, in flight Wi-Fi. There's easier access to battery settings, which is properly located here on the flip. Last week when I talked about the fold, it was down the bottom, whereas here it's exactly where it should be. There's a new battery settings menu as well. It's got a visual design refresh and it gives you some different information. So you can take advantage of things that might be draining your battery a little bit quicker. You can see it all here. That's One UI 6 on the Z Flip 5. It hasn't drastically changed everything about this phone. There's some things though that make life a lot better, like it's got some better camera output now, thanks to the new two times toggle, which should make things a lot better for zooming longer distances as well. So I like what Samsung has done. I'm excited to see what 6.1 and then 6.1.1 will bring, because I know Samsung will be working hard on that already. But that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, because like I said, there's gonna be a lot of content coming at the start of next year. You, this, was, this is the place you wanna be for it. So hit that subscribe button. Like this video as well. Between now and the next video coming out, you can come find me on Twitter slash X and also on my Instagram. And I'll see you in the next one. You.